David Shands, welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. Uh, in episode one, we talked all about uncommon ways to make money in the creator economy. But in this episode, we're going to be breaking down how you built a studio for $750,000, <laughs> which is the biggest sticker price, good for the YouTube thumbnail and for the <laughs> podcast title. Um, but that's not just an opulent studio. That's a studio that you can rent out that you can use to monetize, generate revenue, there's tax benefits. Yeah. Even if someone's listening to this and they're a beginner, this will change their thinking. This yeah. is about elevating their thinking, going to a whole nother level. And we're gonna talk about some of the details, but I wanna take it back. Yeah. Um, you did not get here overnight. No. In fact, you, I'm sure, started super early, but let's let's pick up the story at the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. Like, what were you doing at the Cheesecake Factory? Serving. I was a server at the Cheesecake Factory. Dude, so was I. I was a Red Robin server. Really? So, yeah. So there's something about tips. Oh, Come yeah. Come on, man. People, people skills. Oh, people skills are 100%. You know what the, cruel, the coolest thing is? When I stopped getting so frustrated with my job and I started to like really try to think of why I'm there, Yeah. the job became a lot more enjoyable and I made more money. So I would come to work complaining, oh my gosh, I don't want beer. Is my shift going to be over? Um, people are stiffing me on tips. But once I realized that I would one day speak around the world and I wanted to be a communicator and I wanted to, I wanted to learn how to sell a product, right? So I would start selling the dishes mm -hmm. and I would, I would be unsatisfied with myself if the person didn't get cheesecake at the end of the meal because I'm trying to acquire this skill. Even if they gave me a great tip, but they didn't order cheesecake at the end, I was pissed because why couldn't I sell? They came to the Cheesecake Factory. Why couldn't I sell them a slice of cheesecake? Mm. And once, once I adopted that, my job became a lot more fun. I started making a lot more money. And that's when I began to exit out because I started acquiring certain skills. Yeah. And you were thinking big and small places. Oh, yeah. You were thinking about getting the skills for the next season in your journey. 100%. So then did entrepreneurship st start next? Oh, no. I was always an entrepreneur. Well, uh, when was, what was the move from Cheesecake into the next? Well, what was the side hustle during Cheesecake? A million of them. Okay. I always was doing something to sell money, to, 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 to make some money. But what changed for me was when I stopped trying to like chase the money, I started building this t-shirt brand called Sleep is for Suckers, geared towards entrepreneurship and anyone who's willing to lose sleep to get what they want. Yeah. And that was, I realized that the reason that I never really made any money in these side hustles is because I didn't give the seeds long enough to grow. I'll start making some money. And one of the worst things you could do is make a little bit of money because people come to you with opportunities like, yo, you could do this. I'm like, oh, I'll do that. Cool. I'm going to take the money from this and put it in. That. And I said, I'm not going to do any other business but these T-shirts. And that's it. And mm -hmm. once I like got that staying power saying, I'm going to I'm gonna lock into this, that's when I was able to leave two and a half years later. So the mistake people make is they just pivot too much. Oh, they make like two bucks in affiliate marketing, but then they switch niches. Bro, it's crazy. They, they, they kind of get some momentum on a YouTube channel and then they start something else and they don't actually get the momentum behind exactly. it. Okay, so Sleep is for Suckers t-shirt brand. How many years did you do that? Uh, from 2010, I technically still sell the shirts now, but um, I started in 2010 and I left the job 2012. And so on the way over here, uh, our Uber driver with Omar and I, you know, because we're speaking tomorrow at, at Podcasters Bootcamp, uh, we uh, mentioned you and he, didn't, he said he didn't know, but outside we pulled up front and you got a van, a Mercedes Sprinter van <laughs> wrapped with your image and like, yeah. you know, your, your, uh, your license plate says podcast. Oh, that's what we do. It's legit. <laughs> um, and uh, he saw you, he goes, oh, that guy used to sell t-shirts at the mall. Yeah. And so uh, he recognized you from that. So that was 2012 was kind of the side. And then what'd you do next? Um, 2012, I opened a kiosk and then I opened another kiosk in the same mall. So we had two kiosks in the same mall. And then- Were you there standing like- Getting people's attention. Oh, I was in the streets. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Hawking. Hawking the shirts. Yeah, man. No, but yo, you and to make money in the mall, you have to do that. Yeah. Cause I know, I know when you go to the mall, you try to act like you don't see the guy in the middle. I know. You try to act like you're on the phone. You're not. You're just trying to avoid being talked to. And like we used to go get them. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was such a dope skill set to learn. Yeah, no doubt. Because if I didn't do that, I wouldn't eat. Mm. Yeah. So so these kiosks are happening from 2012 and beyond. Yeah. When, what was the next pivot? Cool. 2012, opened a kiosk. 2013, opened another kiosk in the same mall. 2014, I opened a store in South Cab Mall. So wow. I got all three of these running. Yeah. I wasn't making any money because I didn't understand overhead and profit margin. I wasn't making any money. It looked cool though. <laughs> um, but a few months into me, like I build out this store, I get a loan for $30,000 to build out this store. 
the mall says, okay, well, a bigger store, DTLR, downtown locker room, they want your space, so you're going to have to move somewhere else. Dang. Yeah. Okay. So that's when like it all kind of came crashing down. Because like right when I opened this store, I'm like, all right, I don't need the other kiosk in the mall. I'm going to shut that down. So now oh. I have a kiosk in the mall in the store. And then the mall tells me they have to like shut it down. But when that mall, when that when that store shut down, that's when I was able to finish my book. Mm. And that was game changer for me. Okay, Being so able to change the, what's the book title? Dreams are built overnight. How to create a bridge between your day job and your daydream. Mm. If that mall didn't take the store, I'd probably still be in retail making ten dollar profit per shirt. Mm -hmm. But when I got that, when I got that book, I'm like, yo. This is amazing because people just buy the book and the book is everybody's size. In t-shirts, if you don't have the shirt size and color mm. that you want at the moment, you're not going to buy anything. Mm. And then like for shipping out, you got to go find the shirt, size, pack it. We can pre-pack 100 books and just mail them. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. And then the book led me into speaking. I was on tour with uh, Eric Thomas for uh, for a good little while. And that led into my speaking, led into coaching and teaching and building community. And it just kind of kept evolving. And then 2018, you start a podcast. Yes. But was that the thing? No. Okay. What was before that? Well, I start, I'm still like speaking and traveling and coaching. The only reason I started the podcast and I didn't know what the podcast meant. I didn't know what a podcast was. I just had this genius idea. Like if Sean is going to speak at, the, so I'm, I'm doing this conference. If Sean is going to speak at the conference, I got an idea. I'll just interview Sean and put it on YouTube. If people like that interview, they'll come to the conference to see Sean. I'm like, oh, genius. So I start interviewing, and you'll see those early episodes. It says, hey guys, May 4th, make sure you come to this, <laughs> make sure you come to the conference, right? And uh, yeah, that's, I would do the podcast for that reason, but after the conference, I wasn't interviewing anybody because the there was no need to. So they were like marketing videos. Correct. You thought about interviewing somebody as a way to market ahead of time for Correct. an in-person conference Correct. in 2018. Yeah. So the vision is evolving. Yeah. I mean, the theme here too is that it looks today, uh, Social Proof Podcast has had millions and millions of down downloads, 7 million in the last year. Now it's a million a month. Yeah. So that's 12 million a year and climbing. Yeah. But at the time, it did not even start reverse engineering like that. Correct. It was just sleep is for suckers. It's no sleep. No, yeah, for sure. I'm like, if we got all these people there, I have the t-shirts there, we'll sell t-shirts. Oh, so you can sell books now at the conference, oh, yeah, t-shirts at the yeah, conference. Yeah. You got, and then were you uploading those original marketing videos on YouTube? Yeah, they're still there. Okay, so. What's crazy is the first like nine or 10 episodes, you'll see, I'm saying, hey, I don't have a name for this podcast yet, but we'll name it later. Oh, that is that is punch <laughs> fear in the face and press record. Yeah. I don't even have a name for this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So you're listening to this right now and you're like, what's the perfect name? I'm trying to hire 99 designs to design my <laughs> logo. Yeah, I'm nah. trying to get everything perfect and write my whole plan, which is fine. But like, ultimately, you didn't even name it. This oh, is the no name podcast. The audio is crazy. The video is crazy. And you started the channel and you started RSS. You started uploading on mm -hmm. audio as well. Yeah. I mean, actually, before that, so Brandon that was just here, what he, I think he mentioned like, okay, this, we should do this podcast thing because he's a videographer. He's like just in that space. So he was recording me and he was just uploading like clips of my speeches on there. So you'll still see those on the channel. They're all still there. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's just clips of speeches. I don't know what that was. So, so your YouTube channel goes back pre 2018 with clips of speeches. 2010. Yep. Okay, all of that. I did a marketing video for the t-shirt brand. Yeah. That was really cool. That was beautiful. So we got to check out the, the history there. <laughs> and so then uh, when did the Social Proof podcast get a name? And when did you kind of start getting clarity about like what it is and how powerful it could be? Um, well, the conference was called Social Proof, but I didn't, I didn't link them two together. I, like I wasn't thinking like this is a podcast. I'm like, I don't have a name for this show. I don't even think I use the word podcast. I don't have a name for the show. Yeah. So 2018 for the event, we're we're interviewing people and you know we get people to the conference. I think we had like 550 people there, but I'm not podcasting in between. So 2019, we're doing it again, and uh, we no 2000 was it 19 or 20? It was it 19 or 20 when C19 hit that March? Was that 20? Yeah. Yeah, 20. So the next year, like I start podcasting or interviewing again, and leading up to this one of this next event. But we had to do a virtual. So it still still turned out cool. 
Um, but I stopped it again. But then I saw this, uh, my, my guys, Earn Your Leisure, and they're just killing the podcast space. I'm like, yo, I'm doing what they're doing too. They're just more consistent. And he told me one day, he's like, yo, I like your show. You're just not consistent with it. And I said, at that moment, I'm going to be consistent. We're going to keep going. So it was, it was in 2020, 2020 yeah. C-19 happens and a, a circumstances happen and you've had all this momentum up to that time. And you're like, now's the time. I'm planting my flag. It's time yeah. to get consistent. For sure. On the wall here at the studio, it says consistency is the cheat code. The only cheat code. Oh, it's the only cheat code. Consistency is the only cheat code. Down, down, upright, A, B, A, B. Like <laughs> it's that's the only one. It's the only one. It's the only one. So, uh, and and I've got to shout out that if um, you want a little bit more context around this, we did a whole studio tour. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually see the studio tour, almost 4,000 square feet um, and uh, multiple podcast studios. And so if you're listening to this on audio, highly recommend uh, heading to YouTube and getting that experience. We'll, of course, link it in the show notes. It's over on the, um, you know, main uh, Think Media channel. Yeah. But uh, so then talk about now you got some momentum on the podcast. And let's fast forward to the genesis of opening up the Creators Club House. House. Yes. The Creators Club House, North Atlanta. You get a vision. I'm going to buy a building. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Like, Sipping lemonade on your back porch, are you are you are you up? Because you don't sleep. Sleep is for nah, suckers. Is your never. Instagram handle? So are you just are you just like I'm gonna buy a building? Like what was how'd you get the idea? Um, I don't know. Like how do you like how do you um, describe where a good idea comes from? You know what I mean? Like was it in the shower? How do you come up with an idea to say, yo, you know, we're gonna do a tour of the studio and then we're gonna talk? It's like it just it just hits you when you're doing the thing. So it's a is an evolution. Yeah. Sure. You have a home studio? Was that yeah, the, yeah. I have a yeah. For, yeah I mean, at first, and then you were like, I want No, so I have an event space. Me and my partner Brandon, we have an event space that we opened in 2017 because the same process happened. We're thinking, yo, we need a place to create content and do events. Because I'm doing events already. And I'm teaching and coaching. How and many like seats that. does that have? That that building is four thousand square feet, and I, I gotta show y'all tomorrow. But it's literally down the street. Okay, and, and so and you rented that one. Yes, that's actually where, that's where, I was doing my first kind of like podcast shows because I, I I still have the studio. Yeah. Um, but you'll hear it like there's 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 an airport right there. You'll hear the planes fly over. Every single episode. Flight path. Omar yeah. was saying that. Like, right yeah, up yeah. Under it. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it was the evolution from that. And it was the decision to say, I want to go bigger. Yeah. I mean, that one we didn't own. And I'm just like, yo, I want to build out a place where people can come do plug and play podcasts. And that was my original idea. Like, I'll set up all the studio stuff in the studio and they can just come in, plug up their SD card, hit record on the camera. And they can record their own podcast. That was like my, my initial thinking. Because my first podcast, that's what I did. I would set up the camera, set up the audio, hit record, come around and just do the interview. Then when we're done, we get up, hit the mm -hmm. stop record. So I'm like, I just want to set up for people what I did for myself. Initial thought. So I'm like, oh, I need a building. But I didn't want to build out a building that I, did, that I didn't own. Yeah. But I didn't necessarily have the money to buy a whole building. And I didn't have my taxes. So file your taxes, y'all. It's easier to talk to the bank. I didn't have my yeah, so you can show tax returns. Exactly. I got so you. So nobody's giving me a loan. So my friend was telling me about creative financing opportunities where they call it owner or seller financing, where the owner of the building plays the bank. So yep. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So we got into this deal. I, I saw what's crazy is once you start looking for something, stuff just appears. Mm. I'm driving around. I'm actually, I'm, I'm just driving, trying to find places. I'm like, I don't know what got me in my car just driving around. And I see in the window of this building, owner financing. I said, no way. I'm wow. Because you, you've been learning about it, studying it. And then it was in the window. Obviously, the owner yeah. is speaking to somebody who knows what that means. A hundred percent. So you. And maybe the sign was there for a long time. But if you're not looking for something, you'll never see it. This video is sponsored by StreamYard. This is our go-to platform for live streaming to YouTube and Facebook, especially when we have multiple people joining us on a stream. With an incredibly easy to use interface for doing cool transitions, bringing in text on the screen, and seamlessly bringing on guests. 
this is the perfect platform for the new and experienced creators alike. You can use the link that we have in the description below to get $10 off. Okay, so you own or finance. We talked about this in the tour. It was almost 500K. Correct. And it was, 10, you got him down to 10% down. He wanted 20, which Correct. shows you can negotiate all kinds Everything's of, negotiated. you gotta be looking for something. Even mm -hmm. once you see it, you don't, don't, don't say, don't give up if on the yeah. first no. Yeah, for sure. Keep negotiating. The price is never the price. The price is never the price. Just cause it's no, no doesn't mean no. Yeah. Well, in some cases it does. Unless it's Louis Vuitton or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but in terms of business, yeah, for sure. ethical business, yeah. uh, then if somebody says no, well, hey, what about this? You can keep. Uh, you know, negotiating. So you got him down to 10%, which is like 50K. Yeah, put down 50,000. And then interest only for five years, yep. which makes your payment. 2,800. So you think about that. Now you had to build it out, but 2,800 a month, almost 4,000 square feet. When listeners of this podcast, check out the, the YouTube video, it's insane. Yeah. Multiple, three podcast studios? Yep, three, including mine, four. Four, including yours, which is just yours. Yeah. So three that could be like rented out or just mm -hmm. multi-purpose, multi-use. And then an event space for about 80 people, mm -hmm. masterminds, virtual events, stage, LED wall, and another 250K that you had to put into it. Now that's out of reach for probably a lot of people, but what's super intelligent is that you've been compounding. Mm -hmm. You were taking steps to this. Mm -hmm. You were selling t-shirts in the mall. And yeah, now, and now sure. here we are, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, so and it wasn't, it wasn't like I grab $250,000 and I dump it into the building. It was like the 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 whole let's say like all the walls are going to be 70,000 and they don't ask for the whole 70,000. It's like okay, I've got to do 5,000 here, 2,000 here, 3,000 here and yeah. I'm hustling, I'm grinding and I'm taking all the money from my podcast and I'm dumping it into this. Now, did you refi yet or will you? No. Could you? Yeah, of course. Literally, I was I was just saying you get it appraised. I, yeah, I mean, I could, but I literally just paid off the whole loan last week. Oh, congratulations! Yeah. I get, that's that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Which was so, and so now you could actually go to a bank if you want, one hundred percent. Get it appraised and then get just a loan. But would you need to? No, you're just you're kind of paying it down. You're just paying it off. Well, no, it's like I I just paid the whole thing because it, it's interest only. I'm paying this twenty eight hundred dollars a month. It doesn't touch the five hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. Right, the principal, and I I I I did something like I did a um I did some challenges and I I I'm, I'm working. I just hustling and I saved the money. Then I just gave them like four hundred fifty thousand. I think it's kind of. Would you say this is true about you? I know it's true about me. That sometimes it's smart, like entrepreneurship is spelled R-I-S-K. Like it is spelled risk. Now you have to bet, make smart risks, but there's also something about like lighting a fire mm -hmm. and like that sometimes you need that bigger goal. So of course you never want to bet the farm, it's going to kill you, but mm -hmm. but you do want to stretch yourself. So you you took a risk, you stepped out, you got a loan, but it all, did it not motivate it? Did, you, did it light a fire so you could pay it down? Did that interest payment even make you feel like, I got to do some stuff. I'm going to pay this off as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. But again, I'm still like hustling and I went and got some revenue and I see the money in the bank. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to take all that money and just put it into the building because I can always get the money out. Yeah, you could always get cash. Yeah, I can, I can get 80% of the value out. Yeah. This is me like just learning real estate. So I don't want to have just cash just sitting there. I'd rather be in this building where I, it's almost like I'm making another $2,800 a month now. Yeah. If the money, if the cash is just sitting there. But I, I can always go get it for something else, for another deal. Yeah, but and create more leverage. Yeah, so sure. how how much did saving on taxes come into part of the strategy, or was that not on your mind? Well, I don't know. I mean, um, just write offs in general. Obviously, this is all business. Yeah. You can write off the two hundred fifty thousand of upgrades and gear but and equipment. only after you open it. Uh, okay. So this is the, we opened it this year. So I'm 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 interested to see how my accountant and my tax planning is going to affect this year. That, yeah. And and then you can depreciate the building. Correct. Correct. And did you bonus depreciate it? I don't know. Okay. So but but you could <laughs> depreciate it over twenty seven point five probably yes. at least. Correct. Correct. So then that's the other piece. I mean, is that especially for entrepreneurs, content creators that are creating more momentum, you got to get that financial education. Got to. Of that was vital. the power of real estate. Mm 
This is why, because we're thinking about, I mean, one of the, uh, I'm su super grateful that you brought me out to uh, speak at your podcaster's boot camp. Absolutely. But like for me and Omar, we're here more to learn. Uh, mm. And I feel like we're getting more than we're giving just to be here, to learn from what you're doing and to see it because we also want to open up something like this in yeah. Vegas. And we're trying to learn from all kinds of different, there's so many different models. Yeah. It's the creator economy. You can mm. be so creative. Um, but even we're, we're talking about leasing versus owning. One of the reasons why we want to buy a building is because buying is where you get the depreciation. Yeah. You get the yeah. best tax benefits in real estate. 100%. By far. 100%. So if you're succeeding at any level, and then not only that, um, even between now and the end of the year, it's Q4 at the time of recording this, we're also thinking like, what do we need to upgrade? You always want to be thinking about kicking mm -hmm. that tax can. Like, yeah. Yeah. how can I reduce my tax liability? If you're Amazon, they were running negative for seven, eight, nine years. Yeah. Why? Because it's hyper growth. It's yeah. reinvesting every dollar back in the business. Yeah. Is that still your mentality? 100%. Absolutely. Grant Cardone says something at the mastermind we were both at. And really, this is, this is a major reason why I paid it off. Because he said, yo, I said, he said, I go out and I go make money and I take all that money and put it somewhere where I can't get it easily. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I dump it into real estate. He said, I do that because if I see the account get low, it makes me hungry to go make more money. So like once I once I like took that cash and and paid it off, I'm like, yo, I gotta come up with some more money. Yeah. I gotta go get it. Like there's you seeing money in your bank account can get you kind of relaxed. Mm. You know what I mean? So I, I don't I don't want that feeling. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the depreciation is definitely a tax uh, a tax savings, but I don't look at it as this great thing. I just happen to have the cash. I put it into a vehicle that will save me $2,800 a month, but it's always there. Mm -hmm. The real estate doesn't go anywhere. Okay. And so then now when this opens, an open now, but like as it, if it's running at full speed, what are kind of like the ballpark of what it costs to rent out a studio and what people can do? Um, two things. One, I think we do the rooms, were they like 125 an hour or something like that? Without an engineer, but you still get the audio equipment if you just want to like set up in here and yeah. 125 an hour it has a great sound. We got the sound panels and all that kind Did of stuff. Did you post it on Peer Space also? Uh, we will. I just hired a manager to do that because I'm not going to be able to manage that. Yeah, so, so he'll put it on Peer Space and um, Event Detective and all those. Okay, so all the different apps as kind of like if someone lists their Airbnb on Airbnb Correct. and VRBO, yeah. plus your own website. Correct. And then that would Peer Space could be good for discoverability, but your own website, there's no percentage that Peer Space would take. Yeah, It'd just but, be straight to you. Yeah, th there's another one. I want to like touch on another point. So we do like a done for you where we'll do everything for you, including shoot it, upload it, give you clips to post, upload it on video and audio. And right now it's 5,000 a month, right? But I don't even know if I want to rent it out and do the services for people. I really, I'm really like leaning towards all of these rooms are just studios where me and my team create content. I can bring on content content creators like an artist, I can sign you and say, yo, go in that studio, let's record, let's put this stuff up, let's go on YouTube, let's let's just mash it. And it's almost like a record label buying a studio to make music for their artists. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to keep like renting it out and stuff. I just like just be a monster with creating content and focus on that. So so it's still in the visioneering stage to a point. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I just bought it. Okay. And uh and so your, uh, you've got the three studios, you've got the virtual event space. It may just be for you, but right now, someone could rent it yeah, out yeah, right for now. Sure, for sure. They could go on the website. <laughs> and uh, like how much for the virtual events? To 80 seats, they could run a virtual mm -hmm. event. They got the LED wall. They could teach on a Vibe? Yes, Vibe board. Um, I don't know what that room is. Maybe like 350 an hour or something like that. Or, no, we have like half days and it comes with an engineer for the audio and and playing on the the video wall and switching and all that kind of stuff. How big's your team uh, for it right now? Dedicated to this space? 13, 14. Well, well, 13, 14 total. We got about five in here on a regular one, two, three, about four on a regular basis. Here. So you're not sure if you want to do the five thousand package, but if you did, that means there'd be an editor and almost like a YouTube and audio podcast channel manager. And essentially, yeah, we're doing, yeah, we're doing it now. Actually, we have a client now. We we're, okay for so there. So you upload their YouTube and their podcast audio and you title it and you put the show notes in. Yeah. And so they come here and they shoot, you edit. You, it's completely done for yeah, you. Yeah. That's like white glove. Yeah. 
And so they're able to just show up. Do they solo round or they bring in interviews? Um, yeah, absolutely. So however they want to do it. And I kind of give them a consultation on what I think would work for them. And they'll come in maybe two days a month for two hour blocks where you do two and then two. So you have four for the month. But we try to get to about eight so that you have four in the can. And we'll make sure we release something every single week for yeah. you. So they got so they got that weekly podcast all done. A little bit of so their strategy included. Yeah. Got it, got it. And then and then it'll be a matter, you'll see where it goes from here, but then it'll be a matter of scaling up yeah. because you may you may even scale that down or just keep that one client yeah. because you just want to use it for your own stuff. Yeah. And you're thinking about launching like a network? Um, I want to. I just haven't figured it out yet. Because most value in a network is like if I have sponsors that are like sponsoring our show, I take that money and I put it into the other people on the network. But I don't know if I want to get into that. And I feel like I would almost, I don't use the word babysit, but I really got to like cultivate these podcasters. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I want to take my eye off the ball of what I'm doing to go fulfill that part of the vision. Yeah. Unless I partner with somebody and they can be development and they focus on that. And I can kind of just do high level strategy. So I want to get a final word from you on kind of this entrepreneur journey, this creator economy journey, but a couple of resources that we have is one, um, to get the full experience, definitely check out in the show notes, the walkthrough. So you can see this yeah, amazing sure. studio Absolutely. and kind of get some inspiration Two, if you didn't listen to part one, there is your seven different ways, uncommon ways to make money in the creator economy. Three, we had a great podcast and I mean, again, no hype. It was I think it's the favorite podcast I've ever been on. Oh, wow. Because you also asked ask questions that were kind of at a deeper, more tactical level um, than anybody else has really ever asked. Yeah. And it was actually my first time sitting more relaxed in comfortable chairs. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and we went almost two hours. Oh, I mean, yeah, for so, sure. So it was, it was able to really yeah. get tactical. And so we'll, uh, we can link that up as well. So great resources. But ultimately, you just shared this journey from the Cheesecake Factory to the Creators Clubhouse, um, and it's been a long road. Mm -hmm. uh, your Instagram handle is Sleep Is For Suckers, yes, and so, like, what would you say are the core drivers, core values, or core mindsets that made you, or or, or that created you, that were the building blocks of mm -hmm. David Shands? Not not being arrogant. I'm always knowing that uh, there's something else to learn, and I'm, I, I just have a true hunger to be a better person, and like in all my areas of life. So we've got we've got some like we've got some good downloads on the podcast, but it's not Joe Rogan, so we suck. You know what I mean? Like like we we got we got a lot of work to do. Yeah. And I think when when some people get certain success, they get they they start like. Uh, buying into their own hype and they stop growing. Like I gotta, I gotta keep growing because now that we're at a level, we pass certain people in the podcast space, but we're still, it's like every time you get to another level, you're at the bottom of another mountain. You know what I mean? You look up like, Oh wow, it's a lot bigger. I got a lot more to do. So um, I, I would say um, just kind of keeping your ego in check, um, building amazing relationships with people, just being a person that people are okay being around people are okay doing business with. Um, being honest and upfront. Um, no one can say I ever stole from them or lied to them or try to get over. You know what I mean? I think that's been huge. Um, and just continuing to go, not relying on, I don't, I don't rely on a whole lot of people. We're going to go. And I think my team really appreciates that because they know I'm not relying on them. We're going to get it done anyway. I, I know my team is thinking, yo, this guy's going to go there. I want to be there when he gets there. So like we just we just work. We we work really, really hard, really intentionally. Uh, we respect everybody and um, that's pretty much it.